Okay guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about CNC machines and dust. I'm going to show you how you can set up a relatively low cost but effective vacuum system and how you can design and 3D print your own dust shoe to save you a bit of money. So I've been playing around for a few weeks with my CNC machine and I love it, I'm really into it, it's awesome. But one of the things I've noticed straight away is just how much dust and little chips of wood that this thing throws around the place. It's really easy to underestimate the dust that these things create and you can't really see the majority of it because it's just fine dust in the air. And basically it'll land anywhere that the air can get to. And once you've stopped cutting and you've finished using the machine, you'll notice a couple of hours later, pretty much everything is covered in dust. And when you wipe something, it's just all over your hands. Not only is this potentially bad for your health, you know, you don't want to be breathing in dust all the time, that's not good. But it's also quite tiresome in the fact that you, you're going to have to do a lot of cleanup all the time. And if you're anything like me, you want your setup to be as efficient as possible and as hassle free as possible. So one of the ways you can combat this dust issue is to create an extractor system. And these are really common on much larger CNC machines but they're also very viable and usable on a small machine like the one behind me. One other thing you're gonna to need to make this effective is a dust skirt or a dust shoe. Now a dust skirt is essentially just a little enclosure that goes around your spindle. It covers up the collet and the milling bit and basically just contains any dust or bits of wood to that little area. And then what you do is you attach a vacuum pipe to the little dust skirt and any bits of dust or chips of wood that break off your stock go straight up the extractor into a vacuum system and if you've got a dust filter or a dust bag in there as well it's really going to help filter the air and ensure that you're not breathing in any of that nasty dust. So what I'll do in the rest of the video is I'll show you my design, I'll show you how it all fits together and we'll test it out as well on the machine behind me. So let's get into it. So I managed to pick up the ShopVac Micro from eBay. I actually had a really good deal. I managed to pick this up second hand for just £16. They're selling brand new for 70 to 80 pounds, so I had a really good deal there. I'm really pleased with it. As you can see, the top just lifts off. The motor in this thing is a thousand watts. That's more than enough power for this little machine. And uh, you can see there's also a sponge filter in there, but you can also use vacuum bags as well, which I do recommend. So if you do a quick Google of CNC dust skirt and you look on the shopping tab, you can see there's a lot of different designs, a lot of different sizes. You know, if you want something decent, you're talking 30, maybe even 40 pounds and you've still got to find one that's going to fit your machine. But what I did was I took a look here and you can see that you can buy the brush on its own. So if we click this and go to eBay for example, that's only £6.50 and you get one meter of this brush. And right away, you know, that just clicked in my mind and I thought, right, I can just design my own. And essentially all I'd have to do is essentially feed this in to a little slot on the design and it should hold it quite nicely. So after looking at a few different designs and doing some measuring on my own machine, I came up with this. So as you can see, it's relatively straightforward. It looks very similar to what we've just seen on Google. The only difference here really is that this is built for my machine and the diameter of my spindle. You can see I've created this kind of clamp here that will allow you to bolt this on to your spindle. You can see I've left a hole in the back for an M3 nut. I also have the vacuum pipe at an angle just to alleviate some of the pressure acting on the spindle. And then on the underneath, you can see I've just got this slot around the edge and that allows me to just slide in that brush. And I've, I've designed it in a way that it really has to be pushed in quite strongly so it isn't gonna move. But you can always super glue it as well if you really want it to be stuck in there. As always, I've made this design parametric. So what I mean by that is you can easily make changes. So if you wanted to go in and change things, for example, the angle of this extractor tubing, so I've got it set here to 70 degrees. We can change that if you wanted to go straight up. We can just change that one value to 90, and there's the adjustment. Most of these are all gonna be easily changeable. So I've got the shoe length as well, so we could make that 180. You can see it changes. Obviously you're gonna to have to adjust the positions of things because I haven't got this exactly centered. But you can adjust it for what you need and it should be relatively straightforward if you know your way around Fusion 360. Once I was happy with the design, I decided to print this out. Now I am printing this in PETG and I will advise that the spindle motor does get warm. So if you were to use something like PLA, it's more than likely to warp, whereas PETG is a lot more heat resistant. Installing this then is really straightforward. You just slide it onto the spindle and you can basically position this however you want, depending on the length of your bit that you've got mounted in your collet. Some bits are slightly longer, so you'll need to mount the shoe a bit lower. Some are shorter, so you'll need to mount it a bit higher. You can then just add in the vacuum tube and it's ready to go. 
Overall result, the seminar looks pretty clean and in my opinion is very fitting with this machine. The print turned out really well. I did have to use supports, there's a few little scuffs in some places, but that's not a problem. And also here's that brush that I mentioned, I did end up buying some and I got one meters of it and we're not going to need anywhere near that length. I then had to estimate how much of this brush I was roughly going to need, so I marked that up with a pencil and I was then able to cut that really easily just using the scissors. Getting the brush in there wasn't the easiest, but I kind of designed it like that because I didn't want to glue it. If you're careful and take your time, you can slide it in there and it'll all sit nice and snug. As you can see, final result I think looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Kind of just looks like it belongs on the machine, if I'm honest. So, really happy with that. I saved a lot of money. Total cost for this was probably, including the plastic, I'd say less than five pounds, which is pretty awesome. So here's a couple of test cuts that I've been working on to try to learn more about feeds and speeds. So the cuts are quite rough and they're pretty much intended to be because I'm trying to find the limits of the machine. But you can see the dust shoe is really doing its job here. I haven't done any extra cleaning, the, the vacuum's running and it just, it just works, you know. It, it eliminates all that mess that you get without it and it's really a lot less hassle when doing these kind of cuts. You haven't got to worry about any bits going flying anywhere. Now you can see the brush isn't really causing any issues with the cuts. It kind of moves quite nicely around and it doesn't get in the way of the milling bit. It's important that you set the height of the bristles so that the bottom of them is just in line with the bottom of your tool bit. That way you don't have much force acting up on the Z axis and you're not gonna get in the way of the tool bit. So as you saw there, I've managed to create a really low cost but effective solution. And if you're interested in doing something similar, what I'll do is I'll put the files up on my website very soon so you can download them and print them yourself. I'm gonna be including this stuff in the bill of materials for the machine also as optionals. So if you wanna wait for that, also you can do that. If you wanna look into slightly more advanced systems where there's less kind of maintenance involved, have a look at dust cyclones. A lot of people build those as well, but it does require a little bit more space and a lot more tubing as well. The dust cyclones basically catch the dust before it goes into the vacuum and that way you're emptying the vacuum a lot less and it's just a lot more efficient especially if you've got a few machines running and you don't want to be emptying the vacuum all the time. As always I hope you found the video useful, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.